we've got two wonderful speakers joining us at very short notice. I'd like to introduce Alexandra Ash. Uh, Alexandra Ash is from uh, the YMCA, the Y now rebranded, which is fantastic. Yeah, the Y, got, yeah. Yeah, and we've got uh, Cara Monahan from uh, Belgravia Leisure, the regional manager. So hello. Um, so let's let's start with who you are and, and what, uh, what uh, keeps you interested in working in this wonderful space. Let's start with you, uh, Alex. Yeah, no worries. So um, as I said, yeah, my name's Alex. I've, um, I'm the Executive General Manager of Recreation at YVIC. Um, which looks after um, over 70 facilities and also the um, S South Australian Aquatic and Leisure Centre, which um, is about to hold the trials as of this weekend, um, which is going to be showcased on Amazon Prime for those that are subscribers, which is pretty exciting. Um, I've been with the Y for just over 12 years now through multiple um, different business units, but um, as I said, now head up the... Um, the recreation space. Great. And you, Cara? Uh, Cara Monaghan. So my role is uh, regional manager for Victoria and Tasmania um, for Belgravia Leisure. We've got about 200 sites across um, Australia and in my portfolio, um, I have a mix of um, uh, leisure centres, but also uh, a hotel pool, um, Hepburn Bathhouse and Spa, and also a caravan park that has um, a pool attached and prior to my role here I worked in local government so and I've got two young kids so this is um, a topic pretty close to my heart. Fantastic thank you welcome. Uh, Alex can I ask you just um, have you contemplated the water safety strategy and the role that aquatic facilities sort of play in this overarching goal of reducing drowning? Well, Justin, it's so relevant at the moment. Cara and I are both based in Melbourne and um, unfortunately um, our facilities are not open at the moment and um, the staggering drowning rates um, in Victoria alone, you know, over this last year, um, I think is something that needs to really be taken into consideration as Melbourne and Greater Victoria comes out of lockdown. Um, the swimming lesson or an aquatic facility isn't just somewhere to, to have fun, but it's a, it is a very safe environment where we can teach children um, and adults alike, but most particular children, how to be safe around water and teach that fundamental life skill. And I think um, really um, from the wise position, that's something that is going to have um, ongoing impacts into the future and what even that looks like from this lockdown period, ability for us to provide that fundamental life skill. Yeah, we should acknowledge that uh, it's been a pretty torrid 12 months for industry across the country, but particularly mm. in, in Victoria. Um, so, Karim, so what, what do you think the impact of, of kids in Victoria missing out on swimming during that period will be? What can we do about it? Oh, I think in terms of missing out on swimming, I think there's a few um, challenges there. I mean, I, I, I'm very lucky to be in regional Vic where I live at the moment. Um, but what that means is if I'm not taking my kids to um, the pool, and we know that our swimming pools are statistically fairly safe environments. If I'm not taking my kids to the pool and, and I need to get them out and about and to do something, I'm going to a beach that may or may not be supervised, or I'm, I may choose to go to an area that um, isn't. Um, so I think, I, I think the impacts of venues being closed and not being able to run swimming lessons is profound. Secondly, uh, we have the ability to educate people on um, key messages like, you know, supervising kids and, and swim with a buddy and, and all of those key messages that go across all of the multiple environments. And, and we're just not doing that while we're closed. Right. Um, Alex, what does, um, certainly both of you have, have pointed out that aquatic facilities are incredibly safe environments, but um, that sounds really simple. What, what sort of things do aquatic facilities do to ensure their safety? Oh, multiple, multiple things. You know, we could go to the transactional hygiene factors of, of signage and lifeguards and those sort of things. But me, um, you know, I can provide just one really clear example that I know that um, we did in the city of Greater Dandenong, which is a cold aquatic program, which um, provided in-kind swimming lessons to refugee miners in the community, Dandenong being the highest multicultural community in Australia. 
and um, you know how uh, bodies of water um, provided uh, um, you needed to be safe for, for that cohort. And so what we did was provide those swimming lessons opportunities to then turn into economic benefit opportunities of employment for these young people. So imagine, you know, a person that came over as a refugee minor came and learned how to swim with the wire in one of these, you know, fantastic aquatic facilities, and now is a, um, a nurse at Alfred Hospital looking after um, and our COVID patients and what that looks like. And I think it's those linear, it's those, those linear stories um, that is more than just the signage in an aquatic centre or the um, or the lifeguard that you know helps make sure the place is safe. It's the larger economic benefit and um, and mental health benefit that comes from aquatic facilities. Yeah, we've been we've been working on um, this notion of the health social economic benefits of aquatic industries because yeah. uh, we're obviously we're passionate about more of them. Mm. Um, we'd we'd love them to be open, but we'd certainly like more of them, particularly in regional areas. Um, Curry, you mentioned that you're in regional Victoria. Is there are there pool shortages, pool gaps in those areas? Is that something we could be working on? I think it's signalled in the uh, in the water safety strategy that we 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 need more pools simply. There's, there's definitely gaps and, and not only is there gaps as, um, you know, people move out and uh, our population increases, but also we've got a whole range of facilities that were built after the boom that are coming to end of life that mm. need some love and attention and are falling apart and there needs to be something to, you know, done in that space as well. So absolutely, mm. yep. Yeah, I think uh, to Alex's point, I think if, if we can make a stronger and more diverse case uh, in terms of the contribution that these facilities make, particularly in regional communities, but also some of the outer suburbs, I think, are desperate for, um, for, for opportunities, whether it's sort of employment or, or other health benefits. Um, Cara, you mentioned that you have responsibility for caravan park pools and, uh, and hotel pools. Is there a, do, you, do you go about this differently between the two types of venues? Yeah, it, it, it's it's really interesting, and even you know when you've when you've got the dot points up there around um, risk assessments and and training and standardised data collection and supervision of kids, um, you know the GSPOs talk to those points, and I think the aquatic industry as it relates to um, you know uh, council facilities or, or public pleasure centres is implemented fairly well. I think when it comes to things like committees and management. Um, the hotel industry, um, even uh, spas, the, the documentation and um, the same principles, it's not widely known. The same key messages um, definitely get lost. Uh, you know, in terms of Belgravia Leisure, we've got, we've got very... Um, you know, standardised training tools that we implement right across all the venues. But certainly when I network with those other uh, areas like hotels, um, it, it, it's a place, it's, a, it's an area that really doesn't get much attention um, and isn't valued particularly highly. Mm, yeah, we've, we've, I think we've, we've certainly got a lot of work to do in those locations. And when you look at some of the drowning data that gets... Uh, analyzed through some of the, the hotel pools, particularly when we've got massive amounts of uh, international tourists coming through. There's unfortunately, there's a sort of a regular pattern there. And of course, occasionally, unfortunately, the, we've had some incidents in caravan parks more recently. Um, Alex, I, I do a lot of work with Melinda Kroll, uh, the YMCA National CEO, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, she's a fantastic advocate for the power of the why at a community level. Um, are there other areas that the why can make contributions to uh, the water safety strategy that we haven't discussed yet? Oh, <laughs> I think most definitely. Like at the why, you know, we, we have a... ...have our ELCs, our OSHAs. We have um, a, a, holy, with a holistic view of community connection that um, builds thriving communities. Right, it's not just a swimming lesson. It's not just a, um, a kid getting um, healthy on, on an RPM bike or anything like that. It's a, a holistic view of thriving communities. And so that's where we really um, love um, like 
co-located opportunities, precinct mm. opportunities, but even um, just holistic uh, connections of maternal child health and things like that. So, um, and also, um, you know, we have a, um, a program called Rebuild, which is the Youth Recidivism Program, um, which teaches uh, young offenders trades and then how do we use that in facility maintenance, for instance, like there's a holistic view there. But um, I think the other point is that, and Cara mentioned, um, uh, mentioned it before about um, her experience with caravan parks and hotels. It's also, if we look at these beautiful brand new um, sparse facilities, such as, um, uh, you know, we have this, these huge glass areas and the roof is, looks amazing, um, but operationally and safety wise, how do these um, mm. facilities operate? And I think that's one thing in terms of um, us as an advocacy body, like working together um, in advocacy wise in terms of local governments or in federal government and state as well, is operationally how safe are these beautiful facilities? But an example of a child having to enter a facility in the first body of water that they see is a two metre deep, 50 metre pool. Mm -hmm. Extraordinary when we look at those sort of things. Um, so I think that's a big area in terms of ensuring all venues conduct and implement regular risk assessments as one of the key activities. How do we get in at the front end to really provide operational expertise um, to make these facilities beautiful and usable and safe? Yeah, look, that's a really great point to, to end this se section on. Um, I'd like to thank you, uh, Alex. It's been, been fantastic to have you and Cara. Um, and um, I wish you all the best with the rest of your day.